In the last lecture, we derived the relation for drift velocity in the conductor. Okay, so the drift velocity is Vd equal to minus E capital E divided by M into tau. Okay, so all the variables we have described and explained in the next uh, last lecture. So now in this lesson, we find the relation between drift velocity and the current. Okay, so to do so, I have to write the first equation of current that we know I is equal to this by this. What is Q? Is Q is charge, right? Everybody knows that Q is my charge. Okay, so uh, in this conductor, these electrons. Okay, I have considered this conductor, a cylindrical conductor like this, and this A is the area of cross section, okay, and which is equal to pi r square, okay. So you can also write A or you can also write pi r square. Why pi r square? Because this is circle, and area of circle is pi r square, and let the length of this conductor is my L. And in this conductor, there are so many electrons which is moving with the drift velocity Vd. Because of that, I am getting the current. So I want to find the relationship between drift velocity and the current. So I have to find the charges in this conductor because current is charged by T. Okay. So to find the charges, number of charge. Okay. So I am considering a small portion of it. So let me consider this portion. Okay. This portion. So this portion is my unit volume. What is this? This is my unit volume. Let this small portion be my unit volume in which there are n number of electrons. Okay. So that is let n is the what is this? Let n is the number of electron in u unit volume okay in this unit volume there are n number of electrons why i need this because i want to find the number of charge okay how much charge is here in this conductor so now first of all let me find the total number of electron now okay so therefore total number of total number of electron will be equal to how much it will be n into volume of conductor why because you can write this one we know that n is equal to number of electron number of electron per unit volume right so if you multiply n into volume then you get number of electron isn't it so same thing n into number of i mean volume will be in the number of or the total number of what electron okay so this will be equal to how much n into so what is the volume of conductor so this is my cylinder okay so volume of cylinder equal to pi r square into l you know this area multiplied by length you get what volume and what is pi r square it is a into l okay now here you may get confused uh, you may be following a book in which they will write area as pi r square okay but i am not writing pi r square i am just writing a okay so whichever book you follow just remember pi r square is also area and a is also area so this is my volume is a into so this is my total, this is my N A L is my total, what is this? Total number of electron. So I got total number of electron. But what is this? This is not electron, this is my charge. So I have to find the total number of charge. So how to find total number of charge? So I will therefore the total number total number of charges is equal to total number of total number of electron into into charge of one electron isn't it what 
Understood or not? Because so if you have if you have one electron, you multiply with charge, then you will get what? Charge of one electron. If you have two electron, then multiply with charge, then what do you get? You get charge of two electron. Then if you have a thousand electron, you multiply it with the charge of electron, then you will get charge of thousand electron. But I want to find the total charge. To find the total charge, what do I need? I have to take total number of electron multiply with charge of the electron. Okay, so then how much will be this? So this will be equal to total number of electron. I got N A L into E. What is E? E is the charge of electron. So then what do I get is now I am getting it. So this is my N. Okay. So then the total charge, total charge is equal to how much? N E A L. So this is I total charge. I got the total charge which is equal to Q here. Okay, Q I got. Now I want to find what? I want to find the time t. So for, for this, uh, if you see here, for the electrons are. Okay, let me rub it out. The electron are moving from here to here, okay, and it is moving with the velocity of drift velocity vd, and it is covering the distance of l, this l because the length of the uh, conductor is l. Now, whenever it cover a certain distance, it must take time. So let the time be t, okay. So let t be the time to cover a distance of L okay unit by by what by electron okay then what we know we know the speed is equal to distance by time and distance is L and time is T we have just taken it as T and I want T here, right? Therefore, if I take T is equal to L divided by V, we got V. So, understood? It is traveling with the velocity V D, covering the distance of L and taking time T. Then I want T from this relation. We know V is equal to distance, speed equal to distance by time. So, speed is V D, distance is L, and time is T. You take time here and V D down. I got the Time. Now, therefore, therefore, how much will be I? This I will be Q. Q is my N E A L divided by. Then here will be T and T I got L divided by V D. If you see here, this L and this L are cancelling, or oh, I will get I is equal to and this V D will go over N. A, V, D. So this is my answer because my topic is to find the relation between drift velocity and the current and the relation I got this. Understood? So this is all about the relationship between drift velocity and the current. Now if you want to put the value of drift velocity here you can put but uh, it is not necessary because we are finding the relation between V, D and I. Okay, in the next lecture, we will go to the mobility and the relaxation time. Thank you.